Hi, it's Kane Hodder, Jason from Friday the 13th. You're watching Slashing Cast. Keep watching, or I'll kill you and your whole family. What's going on, horror fans? Welcome back to another episode of Slash and Cast. My name is Riley. That is Nick. Uh, obviously a little bit different today, uh, as we are interviewing Larry Zerner, who is Shelley in Friday the 13th Part 3, as well as a copyright lawyer. So for this discussion, he's the best one to do it. We, we had a few things we wanted to say beforehand, though. Yeah. Um, one, the reason why we're making this video, why we reached out to Larry, uh, specifically because everything that's going on with Victor Miller um, in this copyright case and... Well, now what's going on with the game and no longer having content? A lot of people, especially though, I mean, our lives surrounded the game. Yeah. Uh, not just playing it, but it's our job. Right. So, and, you know, we also have, uh, we've had a lot of friends along in the game. It, it was just, it hurt a lot. And anytime you're emotionally hurt like that, you, you start to point fingers and you think we would fucking know better or we would have learned a lesson. Um, the fact is there was no point... It was not appropriate at all to ever say anything or target anything towards Victor Miller. And while we did not threaten him, attack him, the death threats are just ridiculous. Right. Um, we did unjustifiably target him. I don't want to say we attacked him because that wasn't it. Because I actually, I tried to be mature about it. Right. Well, you know, we're passionate. So as soon as we heard the news, you know, we, we tried to find out who, who did this. What right. did this? Who did this? And, you know, the... The, the answer on the surface, Victor Miller. Yeah, and the, and the fact is, we were just ill-informed, uh, and we were stupid, and we acted out of emotion, and that just wasn't right, and right. I wanted really wanted to just apologize solely to Victor. I mean, it it's just ridiculous. Anybody that possibly got on that train because of us, um, I want to apologize to them, too, because they were ill-informed because of us. You right. look it up as to us as somebody as that's supposed to support news, <laughs> and then we give you some ridiculous thing, which is why you should never post anything online out of passion <laughs> because that's what happens. You know, just we should have sat on it for a few days and, and try to take it all in and the, the truth. Um, right. So basically we want to take our failures, our, uh, our mistakes, and make this video. Right. And hopefully teach you guys about what this case really is. Um, and ideally, this will be the last time we ever have to talk about this case. Un until it's resolved. Until it's resolved. Uh, so that's, that's really all we have to say about it. Uh, this is so, like I said, it's a weird episode cause it's just an interview with Larry. Um, but I think you guys will enjoy it a lot. Right. We learned a lot as well. <laughs> yeah, we did. I thought I, I read the 17 page complaint. I went back to what caused the case in the, happened right. in the first place. And then still Larry explained it better than anyone else could have. Uh, so I, I think you guys learned a lot from it. Uh, regular episode of Slashcast should be coming out on Wednesdays. We'll go over some news, like the nun trailer, stuff like that. Um, but today I think this is most important. I think that people need to hear this in the community. Yeah. And, uh. Yeah, enough stupid words coming out of our mouth. Let's uh, let's go listen to Larry explain what the real case is, and why all this went down in the first place. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the interview. Yeah, first things first things first. Like, can you give us a background behind the case? Because it is definitely pretty confusing for us okay. for us normal so, people. <laughs> so, what what's going on is that the in the Copyright Act. This was in the, in 1978. They added a provision that said that p authors who assign their copyright can terminate any transfers they made after 35 years. So, and that only applied to works after 1978. Pre 1978 works, it was 56 years. So that hasn't run yet. But for night for works that's 78 and after, that just started in 2013 when 35 years passed. So. Uh, uh, I'm so, and it only applies to works that were not works for hire. Okay, so that's the, the so. Yeah, there's a the catch. <laughs> All right. So, and then the the uh, you the way it works is you send a uh, a termination notice. The author will send a termination notice. They can send it any time, ten years before. So at the twenty five year mark, they can send the termination notice. Which would not go effect until, uh, but, and they have to give at least two years notice right. of the termination. So, uh, in this case, Victor didn't send it early. I'm not sure. I don't know why. Uh, I mean, they they knew it was coming, but whatever. They didn't send it till uh, late, and I think their first termination notice was faulty. 
because they had sent one that was going to end up in January of 2018. And it, so they sent it in January 2016. And there was something technically wrong with that. And so then they sent it again. And there was in, in June of 2016. And that's the one that just occurred. So so basically, Victor sent a notice, which is perfectly allowed. And is that's the purpose of the cop. This provision is that copyright. So let, let me go a little bit back for all people who know nothing about copyright. Copyright, when it originally started, it's in the Constitution. We talk, copyright is mentioned in the Constitution. Um, it was originally 14 years. Your only copyright was only 14 years. Then it became 28 years. Then it became 56 years. Then it became 75 years. Then it became 95 years. Now it's 95 years or it's life plus 70. So if you you if you write something when you're 20 and then you live to be 80, it's 130 years of copyright, right? That went from 14 years to maybe 100, over 100 years. So the idea is, and, you know, songwriters, especially songwriters, you know, they tend to sell their stuff when they're, you know, you hear all these stories about musicians who sell their songs when they're kids, right? They're just, they're 18, 19, they sell their stuff and then, and then they're destitute, even though people are making money off the song. So the idea was, well, after 35 years, they can terminate those transfers and make it do. And the, and the way it's supposed to work is you give that two year notice. And in that two years, the idea is people will negotiate a new deal. OK, uh, so that's what Victor did. Victor sent a notice two years ago, and I assume he thought, OK, we're going to negotiate a new deal and and. Because Victor would only get the rights back to the first movie, right? Because that's the one he wrote. And Sean would still own the rights to all the other movies. And if, since any project, no one's doing a remake of just the Friday one. They mm -hmm. want Jason, mm -hmm. adult mm -hmm. hockey mask Jason. Uh, so you, you sort of have to come, they, they would have to come to a deal on how you split up that money. And they would do that. But instead of making that deal, Sean said, no. This contract qualifies as a work for hire contract, and therefore Victor cannot terminate this deal. So uh, that's what the lawsuit is about. Sean sued Victor, sent the termination notice. Sean sued Victor, uh, basically Sean's company, which is Horror, Inc Horror Incorporated, sued Victor, saying, This is, we want a ruling from the court that this was not a, a, a an agreement that can be terminated and so therefore the termination is ineffective and I still own 100% of the rights. And Victor's saying, no, no, I get back my rights. And so that's the crux of this deal. So the lawsuit's been going on for, the lawsuit I think was filed shortly after uh, they originally sent the termination. And then both sides filed what's called a motion for summary judgment, which is uh, a motion you file with the court where you say, your Honor, there are no disputed facts. We all agree on the facts, and on these facts, this is the only decision you can come to. And both sides said, so Victor said, on these facts, I win, and Sean said, on these facts, I win. That motion was heard back in October of 2017, and normally a judge rules on these motions in a month, a few weeks, a month. It's been eight months with nothing. Um, that's really unusual. I mean, it's unusual here in California. This this case is pending in Connecticut. I don't know what life is like in Connecticut court. But so we still haven't had a ruling. And most likely, on my reading of reading the, the, the motions, I think there's no way a judge is going to say there are no disputed facts. And so I'm ruling for one side or the other. I think the judge... In my opinion, I could be wrong, but in my opinion, the judge will say there are disputed facts. So then this matter has to go to. So there has to be a trial for jury to decide basically who wrote it, who wrote what, what's going on. And so even after the judge rules, I think the, the judge will be, then set a trial date, which will be maybe not to be known until next year. Man, that is a, that's a ways out. Yeah. Uh, so Horror Inc. back in, I think, July of 2017 did say that. Um, it was one of the lawyers, I, I don't know who off the top of my head, but they said that the game would not be affected by the lawsuit whatsoever, um, and it'll be free to continue as it, as it will. But obviously now that's not the case. Like, is there something that like changed in that progress, or, or is like Sean's choice to, just to play it safe? 
No. So there's just, there's, I think there's, you can parse that two ways. One is, okay, the game as it exists can still be sold because anything that existed prior to the termination date, which is June of 2018, so anything that exists can still be sold. So the movies can still be sold. The, you know, you can still sell DVDs of all the movies. It doesn't affect anything in existence. So it may be that the, the, the attorney is not thinking, oh, they're still making updates, right? Because that's, that's kind of a new thing where you have a game where you're constantly making new levels and stuff, right? right. That's not how you think of most video games. So it's, it's, it's possible. It, it's probable that's what he was saying. You can still, and, and, of course, people can still buy the game. And and the game still exists, and you can still play the game as it existed as of today. You know, as of today, they're just saying you can't put in new stuff. And 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 the other thing that the the attorney may have been saying is he may have thought, well, this will be done by the time we'll have this done by then, so we don't have to worry about a year from now. I mean, that was July, so I don't <laughs> think any of the lawyers uh, anticipated that this would take that long. Yeah. I mean, it, it is pretty great. It came out of nowhere, too, which I think because that's what's shocking everyone the most. I think that's where the emotional response is coming from, yeah. from fans. Um, I, I wanted to talk about something that you actually tweeted because you you've had quite a few threads uh, on, on your Twitter like, try, trying oh. to explain the case and, and give some clarification. But one of the things you said was um, that if Victor were to win the case, he would only own the rights to the original Friday the 13th script, which you already touched upon, but not any of the sequels. Uh, for those reading who aren't really big at 13 Fantasy, Adult Killer Jason didn't appear until Part 2, of course. And then the hockey match didn't appear until three. So any reboot would involve multiple movie rights. So, I mean, this this obviously affects the film's general if we were to do a reboot. But how does that like affect the game now? Since there's really no elements of child Jason except for in the virtual cabin. Um, really, all we hear that relates to the first film is Pamela's voice, uh, whether talking to Jason or the Pamela tapes in general. So I'm mean, I'm just I'm just curious, like how Victor if, if Victor were to win the case, which he obviously probably gets some sort of chunk. Like, how will that continue to affect the game afterwards? Well, like I said, at the end of the day, if the if the case if the judge rules tomorrow for mm -hmm. Victor, and it's done, they still have Victor. At the end of the day, Victor and Sean have to make a deal on dividing up money for future projects. And 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 I, you know, I as I put in my thread, it's very difficult. There's there's no pre, there's no real precedence on this where you have a movie, you know, where you have the first one and then the second, you know, it didn't really become the thing that you want until movie two and three and four. And so what, but, but the copyright owner, the original copyright owner is, is entitled to, is solely uh, entitled to make derivative works. So if he says, well, only I can make, this is a derivative work. Jason is a derivative work from my Jason, little boy, Jason. But how do you quantify Okay, if you're doing a, a map of part nine, how it's still in some ways it's a derivative work. It's based on in part of the first movie, however small, and and that is a a a a really tough question. And and me for myself who is a copyright lawyer and. I, I got to say, I'm probably the copyright lawyer who knows about the Friday the 13th franchise more than any <laughs> other copyright lawyer. And I don't know what that answer. That's a really tough question, what Victor should get. And there, there is no, there's no, there's no, is it, is it, is it, like I said, I put in my tweet, is it 50%? Is it 10%? Is it 1%? Who knows? But they got to make a deal and, you know, it's a, it's a, it's hard to make that call. And it sort of depends on. And maybe you know, should you make a should you make a, a deal piece by piece, where every time someone comes in with something, you have to then go, well, how much of this is Victor's, or do you just say, oh no, we're gonna we're just gonna say he gets this percentage of the share of the royalty, you know, that comes in because the to Gun Media or to you know, I'm thinking of people like NECA or Mezco who do Friday Thirteen stuff, or the people who do Mask and it's licensed. You know what? They they're not they don't they're not going to pay more. They still there's still there's the box that is the the royalty box. So right. let's say that's ten percent of your sales. I'm just making a number up, right? Mm -hmm. So they're just they're, we're still paying ten percent. You, Sean and Victor, you got to decide of that ten percent how you're dividing it up between the two of you, and that's what they have to do. Okay, 
that 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 makes a lot more sense because the retailer <laughs> right he's like look i'm not getting more money so i i don't I'm not, i can't pay more i'm paying what i can for the rights i'm not getting more rights right yeah that, that makes a lot more sense i think that will clarify a lot of questions for people so <laughs> um and then i mean really the last thing i do in terms of i want to talk about in terms of copyright is, is simply there are a lot of articles going out right now that there's a film actually going to happen in 2020 um, expect a release date at the end of October 2020. And I never believed these rumors, but then there, these bigger people started to jump on this bandwagon sharing this. I mean, I mean, Bloody Disgusting covered it, Dread Central covered it, and I was like, well, and I think I, I actually read an article yesterday that said, this lawsuit doesn't affect the movie, don't worry, it's still shooting uh, at the beginning of 2020. And I was like, wait a second, yeah. hold on, that doesn't make sense. Um, so just for another clarification, uh, is that actually possible? <laughs> I, I have heard nothing uh, about a movie from people who would know about a movie. Uh, uh, I saw Sean a few months ago and he didn't say anything about a movie. <laughs> and I haven't no. I mean, usually when there's a movie, they'll say, this is direct, you know, there's this, the movie, this is the director. This is the, you know, there's, there's nothing right. Yep. What studio's making it? Who's in it? Who's directing it? I mean, just for an example, you look at the Halloween reboot, right. Mm -hmm. When they announced that, right. Oh, it's David Gordon Green and, 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 um, um, right, and you know this is what we're doing, and you know so when you don't see any details, I would not, I don't, I don't, I don't think, <laughs> at least I know nothing about it. I've heard no credible, nothing credible that there's a movie in the works, and I, I don't see how they could do a movie without resolving this lawsuit. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes yeah. sense. Uh, okay, that's pretty much all the questions I have about like copyright act and laws. Um, but if you're interested, I have some random questions just about Larry <laughs> okay. Zerner Shelley. Um, if yes. you if you don't mind us asking some. All right. Um, well, first of all, I want to talk about the game because that that's our that's our niche here. That's what the people are here to to <laughs> see stuff on. Um, when you were first announced as a character, I mean, one, how did that feel? I mean, it's been 30 years, and now all of a sudden you're back in Shelley form. I mean, what was yeah, that yeah. like? Well, it was great. It was it it let. It, it didn't come completely out of the blue because I had met the the gun guys at E3 two years ago. Two years ago? I guess two years ago. Uh, and uh, like a, a mutual friend introduced me and and, and we, I went and saw – it wasn't even a beta. It was, it was like a really rough – form and, and <laughs> yeah. they, they couldn't even get into E3 these guys they were in some condo <laughs> outside of E3 and and I looked at it and I was like oh it looks cool and I was like to my friend I went this is never gonna work <laughs> anyway but uh, uh, I was like because there was nothing I, like it was unplayable it was just like oh they did the map I was oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway and I stayed in I sort of stayed in touch with them over over the over the year and I tweet out to them and and uh, you know, they knew I was uh, excited about the game, and then um, uh, uh, so they knew I wanted to be involved. And and then when they decided to bring Shelley in, they said, "Okay." Uh, they just, you know, I think I heard from Wes, and he said, "All right, we're bringing you in." You know, <laughs> but here's the deal. I was like, "Great." Um, I, I mean, yeah, because uh, I mean, I'm really honored because it's it's really just me and Tom Matthews are the only actors from the film who got to do our voices right uh you know they've done they've done fox and and unfortunately glory passed away but they did a a chuck you know kind of yeah mitch right is chuck but yeah they didn't bring david Gatums in um so i'm 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 just uh, i was honored that 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 they said no we're gonna let we're gonna let larry do it we're gonna use his likeness and 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 I, it's so great. I mean, I'm a huge gaming fan. I, I play games, and and I would. I mean, I I had backed the Kickstarter from the beginning. I yeah. I had given up my money and uh, was in on the on the Kickstarter. So I, I was so happy to be on the game. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome to, to even be able to see you at all. It's been which a lot of people try to hate on you. Say they say you're a slow character. I think that's ridiculous. All right, I think you're one of the, you're my probably my favite male counselor. I. <laughs> Pretty dominant, okay. Yeah. He's pretty solid. I, I don't. I, I don't. I mean, I, I, I only. I play as Shelly because what? The, what else am I going to play? You can't as, not but, play as yourself, you know. But uh, but uh, you know, he's not the. I mean, you know, he's he's not. I die a lot, but I don't know. I probably die as whatever. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. I mean, at least you see yourself. That's all that really matters. <laughs> Uh, like, like you just said, you're actually a, a fan. Like you actually play the game. You're you're one of those that actually sit and I think you play on Xbox and PS4 if I'm not mistaken. 
Um, uh, yeah, I was playing Xbox. Now I sort of shifted completely to PS4. Yeah, you know, just... Can't blame you. Can't blame you. <laughs> um, so with single-player challenges, I, I'm obviously you probably have played through them or at least to the point where you got past... Uh, oh, I'm, I'm about to hit you right... Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I got stuck at the second level. I got stuck. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't. How do I get that girl and put her face in the fucking stove? Listen, word around the offices, there's these guys called Slash and Cast that have tutorials out there. <laughs> you can just go check that out. The, I, didn't want to, I, felt like, I feel like that's cheating. It, 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 yeah, it definitely is. Oh, yeah. But a lot of people do it, so it's fine. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I guess I mean, you obviously know what your, your part is in in single player challenges where you're they it's a recall back to the you know part through through juggling and whatnot uh i don't mean to ask the same question what that was like but now you haven't played through it so now it's kind of i haven't played it i haven't got there yet <laughs> have, you, have you even like seen it do you even know what the no nope. nope. wow really i did the i remember doing the vocals i mean i was in the script that they when i did the vocals so Wait, now when you went in uh, this is probably something you probably actually legitimately can't answer or gun will get mad at me um, but it's like you went in, obviously you had to record certain vocals. Uh, is there anything yeah. you recorded that you saw that was never used at this point? Well, I don't, I don't remember. I mean, I don't remember cause you're just, you're just in a room like saying line after line after line. I mean, so, <laughs> uh, I, and, and there were, then at the end, I remember we did a bunch of stuff that I knew was for the single player experience. Cause it was more like a script as opposed to, Oh no, what was that? You know, like, <laughs> you're doing that for hours you know like uh, over and over again um so uh i i though i think i made them i made them record i'm an actor not i'm an asshole i'm not an act i'm not an asshole i'm an actor i made them record it but i don't think they used it but no, i, I said i'm gonna record it and <laughs> you know, let me give it to you it. you see you're gonna stick it in there somewhere. i was looking for that line and i don't believe it ever came through yeah. so it's a real shame <laughs> but i did record i i told i told, it wasn't in the script so you know but i i said look we're just gonna add this and Maybe one day you'll stick it in. You have it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's, it was, it really is great. You need to go back and pull, you got to finish them. You got to get there. Okay. Gotta, it's worth All right. seeing. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so, I mean, just, just out of curiosity, you, you obviously, did you start as an actor or was it lawyer? You're kind of your first. No, I was, I, I did that movie. I was 18. I was just, I was, uh, yeah, I was in my first year of college. I was a theater arts major, and I was just, uh, you know, wanted to be an actor. That's that's that was my start. So what, so, what made you like flip the switch? What made you want to actually go into being a lawyer? Not making money as an actor. <laughs> I, well, you, I mean, at eighteen, that's a pretty good start, to be honest. <laughs> it was a great start, yeah. but it was all downhill from there. Yeah. Uh, uh, it just peaked, <laughs> peaked, shall we? <laughs> We saw uh, that. that re it. We saw that residual check uh, on that's Twitter. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that, that was for that was for an episode of Fame I did. Wow. <laughs> I mean, obviously you're a pretty great lawyer. You're doing uh, just fine. You represent some uh, pretty big people in Hollywood. So, I I, I, I have a good time, and so <laughs> I love being a lawyer. So, uh, if you're listening and you need a lawyer or someone to sue someone, you can call me. So it's don't, not, be, don't be shy. You're you're gonna be my first call for sure. All right. <laughs> um, well, I mean, Larry, that's that's pretty much all I have. Is there uh, anything else you would like to say? Maybe you'll share your Twitter, anything like that. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm, uh, legal stuff is at Zerner Law. Uh, the movie stuff is Larry Zerner, so that's pretty easy. Uh, uh, if you want to meet me, I'll be at Mad Monster Party in Arizona yeah. on Friday 13th, July 13th, so a month from now. Which so, is going to be uh, an epic event. Uh, so. Also, Tom Matthews will be there, uh, and Kane will be there doing Nintendo Jason photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, and Savini. First doing time Savini ever too. a Nintendo Jason photo shoot, so um, yeah. i got to get a picture with, with that. <laughs> that uh, I'm yeah, to that. we really wanted to go to that, but too bad we couldn't make it. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I got some more. I got some other conventions coming up, but I haven't announced it yet. But uh, I got. I'll be. I'll be. I got like three or four in the next uh, next year. So awesome, awesome. Well, uh, yeah, thank you very much. I mean, I really do appreciate you taking the time uh, to answer some of these questions and just one give people some clarification uh, yeah it, it just felt, people were just like i just saw all the people like rag dragon victor and like victor's all greedy and i'm like no that's not what's going on here um you know i mean victor's doing what the copyright act was put is meant to do you know yeah. try and get his rights back now whether or not the contract one of the problems is i don't think sean had a lawyer <laughs> when he drew up that contract for victor it's two pages and it's 
pretty poorly drafted. Yeah. And so based on that, they have these, you know, they have this lawsuit. If the law, if the contract had said, this is a work for hire, this is the, you know, then, you know, or it had been clear one way or the other, then they wouldn't have had this problem. Yeah. It's, it's a, so, but, you know, look, neither, you know, I, 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 that people are, you know, neither, you know, they were like, fuck Victor or fuck Sean, you know, look, guys, it's a game. Let's, let's, let's try and stay positive and hope that we can get it worked out, not be, doesn't do any good to, you know, be out there yelling at them. Yeah. Attacking does nothing. We just got to support them and hope we get through it. Yeah. Right. Right. We'll get new kind of, but eventually this will get done and there'll be all sorts of new prize or stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, All right. again, thank you. I, I really, I okay. can't, I can't read it enough. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. uh, like I said before the episode started, Larry gets it. Larry knows the case. He's an awesome dude, and I can't thank him enough for coming on to the show. Yeah. You know, he's a funny guy, too. I got a good <laughs> laugh. I'm glad we got to talk a little bit about him being in the game as well. Yeah. Um, so I hope you guys learned something, and hopefully this can bring an end to the fighting in the community, especially those targeted towards Victor. That stuff just isn't appropriate. Right. You know, us as Friday the 13th fans, not just game fans, but Friday the 13th fans yeah. need to band together and support each other. Right. And, and giving those, I mean, if the, if people know, if Sean knows, if Victor knows, because at the end of the day, they have to come to an agreement. Yeah. And if they know the fans still want things to be here, that agreement will probably settle a lot quicker, huh? Right. Um, so the faster that gets resolved, the faster we could possibly see game content, maybe. And definitely the faster we see... Even more toys, more NECA uh, right. figures. Right, uh, there's movie. NECA. That, I mean, even a TV show, you know? Yeah. They've been trying to get another TV show up and going as well. You know, maybe that's the next step they need to take yeah. to, to get a new movie out there. Maybe they need to do a TV show first. Who I knows? Mean, the, the fact is F-13 is at a complete halt because of this case. And right. it, no matter who wins, who loses, how it splits up, it needs to be resolved in order to move on. And it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. There's no real winner or loser. <laughs> right. I mean, there's really not. The it, longer this case goes out, the more we lose. You know, the sooner it gets resolved, the sooner we all win. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Look at it that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, once again, thank you to Larry Zerner. Yeah. Hopefully we do something like that again in the future. Maybe something more. Maybe we'll bring him on to play the game. Maybe. Maybe. That'd be fun. Maybe. Larry. <laughs> um, okay, but with that, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Editor, roll that out. I like you. I like you a lot. I, I was thinking that maybe you know, we could... I... Damn it, Shelly! <laughs>